Hi everyone, my name is Matt. I am a product expert for Affinity Designer and today I'm going to talk you through a sort of step-by-step -step guide as to how I made this um, gradient really colourful um, vector school illustration. So let's get started. So the first thing is, um, I've actually got this set up already, but um, you would need to go to File and New and basically there you can choose your uh, preferred document size, add uh, artboards, uh, add a uh, bleed if it's going to go to print or something like that. Um, but I'm not going to go through that now because I've got quite a few other bits to, to talk through. Um, but I've got this set up. I will actually show you my uh, document setup. Um, so I've actually got this set up as sort of a, a 300 DPI, um, so fairly high. Uh, DPI really, um, as it's something I might print. So I'd like to sort of keep it relatively high as opposed to going um, like a screen resolution like 150. Um, and for this, I'm actually got it set to RGB. The reason being, I want to use it for Instagram or social media. And my main purpose is really for, for online at this stage. I, as I say, I, I might print it at some point, at which case I will address the sort of colour changes that I might need to make or little tweaks really more than anything. But the key thing I wanted was to have really punchy, really bright, um, yeah, really vibrant colours, which I find, um, yeah, are better in this RGB setting. So yeah, this is what we're going to essentially end up with, um, something like this. So what we're going to do, if I just zoom out a little bit, I have an artboard ready to go which is essentially the same size and I have this set to essentially like a a square A4 um, or A3 print so it's 297 millimeters by 297 just my personal preference I don't know why I tend to do that but it kind of ticks both boxes of being a square so great for social media and um, also a large for if I did print it at some point um, so great. So the first thing I did um, was actually utilize the fairly recent stock uh, option that we have in Affinity Designer. So if you can't see this option on the right hand side, the stock panel, you need to go to the top and you need to go to view and studio. And here, this is where you can add all the any panels that you can't currently see. And you want to select uh, studio, which I've already got selected, obviously. So um, oh, sorry, you want to select stock, should I say. Um, and here you can, essentially it's like linked to uh, Unsplash, Pexels and Pixabay. So it gives you the database of all of their images directly within Affinity Designer, which is extremely beneficial, saves you so much time. Uh, I just find it really, really uh, like a great, great feature we've got in there now. So for this example, I want a nice skull image to use. Type in skull. But before you do that, just make sure that you've ticked the little um, terms and conditions box so that you understand um, the nature of... I'm actually going to cancel that, so I've officially ticked it. There we go. Um, just to so, show that you um, are okay to proceed with terms and conditions, which you can read into as well. So, and just a quick run through. Basically, for example, with Unsplash, the images are... Um, I think they're technically on the Creative Commons or they're free to use without, um, technically without uh, crediting. But I always say if you can, it is worth, it is good to do that. Um, what happens with this? So actually, I'm just going to use this top top image because I've already I've already had a scroll through there. But this top one was my favourite one. When you scroll, when you drag the image in, you get a little uh, pop up window here. So if you are able to with your design. Um, to credit the original um, artist or photographer, um, you can do so um, using the little pop-up window. And you can also use the, if I just close that for a sec, um, it says here, photo by Luke Southern. So thanks, Luke. Um, you gives you a little link here um, to get more information on them. And also uh, it, a little button here takes you straight to the, in this case, on Splash um, page with this image on it. So there we go. So this is a great little tool we've got in um, Affinity Designer. 
So I knew I wanted something with a skull and I wanted to have these sort of random shapes coming out the eyes and sort of other areas. So roughly, uh, and for this actually, I knew I was going to sort of tilt it probably to get a nice diagonal um, vector shape sort of coming through. I, But to start off with, I want to just keep it sort of in the middle, nice and even. And so, yeah, I'm just going to keep this in a roughly the right sort of size that I think I'll need. And I'm going to use command, as you can see there, just to resize accordingly uh, and keep it all in the correct proportions as well. Let's put that around about there. Cool. So now if I go to my layers panel on the side as well, um, let me just close the previous one there. So this is um, just to sort of run through the other layers work as well. Uh, we'll go through that a little bit more further down the line as well. But um, if I just use uh, Alt to zoom in a bit there as well. So here we have our skull photo selected. If I now go to our adjustments that we can add um, to this skull, here we can actually do a few things which make our life a lot easier when we're actually trying to uh, recreate this skull. So in this case, I'm actually going to um, illustrate the skull, but I'm going to use the skull as a, essentially this is my reference image. Um, so here we've got loads of different options. Um, I'm making sure that you've got the skull selected on your layers panel. I'm going to use a um, posterize effect, which I quite like. So what this does is just sort of really simplifies um, the image massively. So you can go all the way to the top and it looks exactly like it did before. Or by going right down and limiting the amount of levels, you are sort of breaking it down just to sort of the core areas of the image. Um, which I find really, really handy sometimes if I'm trying to work out, okay, where's the main areas that I need to include, especially when I'm drawing something which is a much more sort of basic version of this. I need to know, right, which bits do I need to be in there the whole time? Or, you know, when I've finished drawing, which bits are really, really important? So that's a, a useful thing to start off with. Um, and in fact, yeah, there's some, something around about maybe like 10 is quite nice. Let's keep that there. And now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to bring this opacity down a little bit so it's not quite so intense on the screen because the next thing I'm going to do is to start tracing it. So let's leave that 50%. That's an even number. Um, right, so what we're going to do is for this example, I'm going to use the pencil tool to trace our image. And I'll just show you a few different settings that you have available to you on here. So if I'm just going to zoom in again, I'm just going to use this, this space here. So the key things that I like to use with the pencil tool, um, first of all, let's actually get some color on there. So when you select it, um, chances are you won't have any color or any, any settings applied yet. So first of all, go over to your color panel on the side and choose in this case, we don't actually want a fill to, to happen when we draw, and I'll show you what happens when that's selected. But we just want, I'm just going to have like a black outline for this. So select the um, the, the non-filled circle, which is your outline option. And then I'm just going to select black like so. And if fill was selected, um, it, which, can, oops, which can be quite useful, <laughs> because I've got the uh, main, there you are, my main artboard selected there. Um, in fact, I'm just going to do a new layer just to avoid any shenanigans happening again. So let's do that again, fill, and there we go. So also to show you this example, if we go use fill, you'll see that it's giving me a this fill area here, which we don't want for this example. So let's just get rid of that and make sure that it's turned off. But at least that's just to sort of give you an example of what happens there. So um, let's go, also the other thing, I, sort of the key thing really that I like to use is the stabilizer tool. So as you can see, when you use the, I'm using a mouse at the moment, um, it's really jagged. So it's, it is it's accurate to what I'm inputting into the, you know, into the computer, but it's, I find it a lot harder to get the 
the lines that I would want if I was using an actual pen. So the way that I do it is I use the stabilizer. And there's a few options here. What that does is it gets this really, really handy. It's like it's sort of dragging it across. So it is literally stabilizing the line. And there's two ways you can do that. There's the rope mode, which this nice little pink line is essentially a rope dragging the um, design across. Or you can use the window mode. Now this is, acts a little bit differently, and it's because it's actually got it quite. Um, the setting is quite low there. If I just increase it, so you can see, it's sort of like an elastic band almost, it, um, or you know, it, um, what's the like bungee? It's kind of like it sort of shrinks and then it will increase if you as you drag the sort of if you're quite fast with the way that you move across. Um, so it changes in that way. So it can be quite useful for certain designs, but I generally always prefer to have it set to rope. Um, just have it set on 30 is probably a little bit better for this. In fact, I'm just going to type it in. Bosh. So let's get rid of this. So let's begin tracing. So we go back to the pencil tool. Um, I'm also going to, just going to look at my stroke settings here. So as it stands now, I think that's probably set to a previous design. So the pressure is usually set to sort of n nothing. So if I dragged my line out, it would be there'd be no dynamics to the line at all. So unlike we have here, so let me just reset this so you can see. There we are. It's a really flat, uninteresting line. Not, you know, good for certain things, but for this, we want it to look a little bit more realistic as if I'd actually painted it with a paintbrush, for example. So let me just do that again. If I click in the middle, in fact, make sure this is set and then click here and then drag these down. This is not say that, oops, say there actually, that's the best, better part. There we go. We've now got it set to something a bit closer to a paintbrush. And actually a bit more would be better for this really. So let's go. You can see that's adjusting actually the, um, doing like a live preview. Yeah, something a bit more drastic would probably be better for this. Yeah, cool. Let's, let's go with that. Uh, great. I'm just going to delete this line that I don't need. So we've got our artboard with the skull inside it. And we've got a new layer which we made. And just a quick example. Um, a talk through of the of the layers you've got here. You've got add layer, um, which will give you a your sort of standard layer, or a pixel layer, which we will cover in a, in a little bit. But at the moment, um, just click add layer to create a, a sort of more versatile um, layer for your vector lines, which we're going to make. So anyway, let's get started. So I'm just going to click and drag and start to create some lines inside this skull and as you can see my first line it's actually put it inside that layer and it's sort of giving it a sort of inset um, just to keep everything nice and neat and again it gives us more options when we come to rearranging things um, great so I'm just going to draw some around here and I'm not going to do the whole thing because that will take quite a while or at least longer than people are willing to um, tune in for I imagine but I'm just going to show you some of the key things that I like to do uh, when I'm doing this sort of illustration so there we go I, I really like this sort of join so if I just do one over here again I like it when it's sort of overlapping a little bit and it then creates this sort of new shape just here um, so you can be really meticulous with where you make your connecting lines um, and it's another thing to think about as well is if you, so we're drawing this with black lines, um, which would essentially make, um, in fact, actually that's what we're going to go to in a little bit. I'm going to draw the sort of bulk of the skull, if you will, in white. Um, so obviously the black lines show through, but with things like this, when you actually invert it, um, 
or you put it onto a black background, you basically you, you, you can't see the the lines that you've made. You can just see these sections here. So I think it's quite important to consider that when you're drawing things. So you, you think, well, it's quite nice to look at with these lines that I've made, but also there's a new shape here um, that I've made if I was to um, sort of hide these, these lines that I've drawn. Hopefully that will become clearer <laughs> in the next step um, when I get there. But yeah, let me just chuck some of these lines on here. And I'm sort of, it's kind of like a little bit of a sort of maybe traditional sort of tattoo-y tattoo sort of a vibe that I'm trying to get. Um, so yeah, quite a lot of lines is quite, quite nice for this. And again, you can see how beneficial this stabilizer mode is because it's just allowing me to be much smoother with the lines that I'm creating. And again, I'm using um, just a mouse, just a regular Apple uh, mouse um, to do this. So it's not like a fancy uh, graphics tablet or anything. You know, it's just making the most of the tools that you have available as well, um, which is always a great thing. Let's just do this one here. So there's there are some areas which do become quite hard to see because it's quite a high contrasting photograph um, of the school. So you do have to sort of use your artistic license a little bit now and then and just go, well, this kind of looks about right. Um, you know, you can see on this side, there's a bit more detail. Um, but that's part of the fun, isn't it? I guess just being able to, you know, create something new, really. I mean, we're using this great photograph, but um, we want to end up with something that we've made ourselves. So something that's kind of wasn't there before, which means it's quite good when you can add these little bits that technically you don't really know. Is that a bit of, is that a tooth section there? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but let's just keep sort of adding and, and sort of see how it looks. And we've got more bits together. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to try and do a few different areas just to give you an example of what I would do uh, if I was making the whole design. And also I've just kept this exactly, so I've cut it um, set to a width of five points. Just for me, I find that quite a nice balance of, you know, if you're doing something with a an actual paintbrush or a nice brush pen, the lines wouldn't all be exactly the same width, you know, no, no way. So by keeping it the same, sometimes that's quite nice because it gives you a more computerized look. So I've obviously made this um, using design software uh, because th these lines are so incredibly smooth as well, sort of when you look at the edge of them. And sometimes that's quite nice just to go, I'm not trying to pretend this has been handmade. Um, I'm just trying to sort of create the sort of vibe of a, uh, a painted illustration. But the other thing you can do is once you've made these lines, you can change them individually. So often what I will do is illustrate the whole thing and then notice that some areas need much sort of more finer detail. So I might go in with a new layer where I've set, set it to um, like a lower, you know, uh, either like a three, three points or something like that. Okay, so I could keep drawing this, um, but I'm aware I've got a few bits to go through. So I will, I'm just going to skip to the next step. Um, so just imagine that I have spent a little while uh, drawing all of these lines and you've witnessed the whole thing. But the next thing I would need to do, if I go back to my layers, is I need to do a new layer again in the bottom corner here. And I'm going to create the skull base. So first of all, I'm just going to lock that so we don't get any um, accidental sort of cross clicking or anything. So to do this, I'm going to use the pen tool, which is something that you should definitely uh, get familiar with if you don't currently know much about it or sort of um, don't know really sort of some of the tips and tricks with it. Because it, it is a really great tool that you can 
use for so many things. And I'm actually, just so we can still see these lines, I'm just going to go back to my layers here and I'm just going to drag this underneath my lines. And if you'll notice there, which we'll, I'm sure we'll come back to in a, in a further down the line, it's important to select carefully where you drag your layers. So there's essentially three different points you can get to. So I've just gone for underneath the thumbnail. If I was to go under here or to the right hand side of the thumbnail, you end up with two different clipping options. Um, but for now, let's just drag it underneath as you would um, very traditionally. So let's create the base. So now I'm going to go back to my color uh, panel and I'm going to keep this with a white outline actually. And yeah, let's just begin. Um, and actually, again, one thing I'm going to do is increase the opacity for this just so I can see a bit more of the detail this time. 65 should do it. Great. So let's begin. So simply just go over to the pen tool, um, select your color on the color panel and begin. So just make your first click. Um, now we've actually got this, uh, it's actually keeping hold of the settings that we had with our uh, pencil tool, but that's fine because I'm actually just going to use this just to mark out the area and I'm not actually going to keep a stroke with this. I'm just making the base shape. So that doesn't really matter because you can see here it's actually gone quite thick in the middle there. Um, and it's kept the sort of dynamics that we had with the black, black line. So, um, but yeah, we don't need to worry about that for now. So this is just a dead simple outline. Um, I'm just sort of thinking where it might look, uh, my, where it might go. Sorry. When I've got my finished skull. So yeah, something around about there. Maybe a bit of a curve here. Um, and just to mention as well, sorry, I'm just sort of um, blitzing through that. The pen tool and selecting and adjusting nodes. So the simplest thing to think about is basically um, click and drag is what you do with the pen tool. Click and drag by holding down. So before you let go of the of the, of the mouse here, it allows you to control where this line goes. So if I was to just, if I just undo that, if I was just to click here, it will just suddenly stop. And then I can use my other uh, keyboard modifiers to adjust that, which I'll show you as well. But generally speaking, what you would normally do is just click and drag and adjust where you want this line to go, almost like a snake, just kind of going around um, the the design you're making here. And then when you get to the end, um, and in fact, before I do that, I'll just show you some little shortcuts here and addition, additional tweaks you can do. Uh, so if you hold Command on a Mac, um, or control, I guess, um, PC, apologies if I'm wrong with that. Um, you are able to, first of all, re adjust the lines that you've made. So you're not, it's not set in stone. You can always adjust these lines, which is another reason I love using, um, doing vector design work. It's sort of infinitely adjustable and you can always go back and change things. Um, but you will also notice that it's keeping the, this line over here, uh, perfectly in line as well. So it's trying to help you keep everything sort of balanced and smooth as you're joining your lines together. So that's something to bear in mind. Usually if you're drawing something with a pen tool, you'll be alternating between just clicking and dragging and jumping to, if you're using a Mac, jumping to command just to be able to change these uh, nodes and um, handles um, really, really easily. So once you're happy with the general shape, what you'll notice is when you get to the end point, the end of the pen tool converts from a plus to a little um, circle to say that you want to join the two together. And I'm just going to tweak this because when I made my first line, this doesn't, basically, this isn't really what you want, usually. If I just zoom in on that as well, you can show you what's going on. When the two lines are joined, you want them to be super smooth. So you want it to be one fluid shape. And the reason 
that's happened is because when I made my this first uh, node, this first line, I just click down. And if you click and drag, you end up with a smoother joining point. So when the two lines come together at this stage, they would have been smooth. But the way you can fix that is by selecting that node here. And you go to convert at the top in your toolbar and it makes these uh, it basically gives you another adjustment um, adjustment bar here. So great, now we've got one smooth shape. It's not the best shape, I'm not going to lie. I, I would probably adjust that a bit more. Um, it's not a million miles away, but like this is a bit a bit sort of wide here. That should be a bit sort of narrower. Um, not up here. And oops. I'll tweak that a little bit more. But now what I want to do is ignore this stroke outline that we've got, which is a little bit odd because it's really thin at the top and the side here, and then it goes a bit wide, obviously, in the bottom corner. You want to go to your color, color panel, and you want to click this little button here, um, little two arrows curving together, and then you're instantly given a fill of the same color, obviously. Great. So we're starting to fill out our image and it's in its initial stages. So now I'm going to actually move over to step two um, and just sort of jump to the next stage. So main thing we've done here, we've, we've just to run through everything, selected our reference image. We've started to trace or, or redraw using the pencil tool. And then we've got a, a backing fill color um, to start to create like a nice selected score design. So if I just zoom out, I have to go to my next canvas, which I think is here. Yeah. So in true um, Blue Peter fashion, I guess, here's one I made earlier. Um, as you can see, I filled it out a bit more. It's very much the same sort of thing I was making in the previous um, started skull. Um, but you can see I've added a few um, blockier sections here as well. And you can see it's just um, starting to fill out a bit more now. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just looking at my previous image uh, as a reference. So I think the next step really is to start to make these sort of vector blobs that I want to have coming in um, through through the school's sort of first eye. So let's do that. So, okay, best way to do that. So we've got this layer here. Oh, actually, I'm on the wrong layer. There we go, drawing layer. Um, make a new layer, as with before. I'm going to use the pen tool again. And we're just going to start by imagining, so I think it's going to go around here. Yeah, around here, and then probably ignore this eye, but maybe, or maybe come through underneath it. Okay, yeah, so let's just start. So again, just going to click and drag, click and drag. Um, there's a few ways you can do this. I think actually for this example, I'm going to just, you, you could do it where you, you draw your vector um, sort of like these lava blobs or whatever they are. You draw your whole line, so you go from the top to the corner here, um, and then you can mask off areas that you don't want to be there. Which we could do, actually. Maybe that would be easier in some ways. But actually, I'm going to go with my initial technique, which was um, to basically draw this shape. I'm just going to stop that one there. I'm going to draw it meticulously to the area that I want it to be, as opposed to drawing one long blob and then adjusting that. So yeah, let's just quickly draw that around here. Um, and I'm just going to do something like this. This looks about right. And again, you can use the, just to show you that as well, actually. So this was the click and drag pen tool method. Um, if you, you've got your adjustment line here, or your handle, should I say. 
if you actually tap on it again, so it says minus here or um, diagonal line here, here, but you can sort of reset it. So now I can give it gives me sort of more of a um, direct line for my next um, my next node that I'm making. So that's something that's quite handy. So you generally jump between those um, those few techniques. Again, I'm sorry if I'm making obvious uh, <laughs> obvious uh, guides or going over anything that people already know, but just as a, a guide for people that want a bit of a, a guidance or some tips with the pen tool there. So let's do something like that. Yeah, that looks cool. This is just going to go out of the artboard, obviously, so we don't need to make that perfect. Um, that's a starting point. I'm just going to adjust that a bit more. Here and here. Okay, let's give that a fill. Let's see how that looks now. Uh, let's give that a... Oops. Uh, another shortcut, actually. Um, shift and X. Switches these around. It's a great shortcut. Um, hopefully, that's something you'll you'll use all the time now. Um, but I use that a lot. It's a good one. Um, I'm actually not that happy with this bit here, so I'm just going to drag that across to say somewhere like that. Uh, yeah, that's okay for now. Okay. No, it's not. I'm going to tune that again. I'm not happy with it. Yeah, it needs to be more like a... Yeah, that's better. Sort of like it's actually flowing through. Cool. This is going to look better when it's got <laughs> the other parts to it. Um, okay, stage two. New layer. Pen tool again. Uh, P to go straight to pen tool. Excellent little shortcut again. Um, this is something like this. And then around there. Then like so. And then click down here. This is more like a sort of um, like a wave coming down here, I think. Can't make it too thin though. So something like this. And then make it a bit sort of sharper up here. Let's give that a fill as well. Make sure this time I'm just going to go straight to the, the fill option. Okay, this isn't. This needs tweaking. I mean, that usually happens. Usually you might draw your, your shape and it's just not anywhere near the sort of fluidity that you wanted with something. Um, like this is not really looking quite right yet. Let's make this down here. Yeah, that's, get, that's getting a bit more... Uh, almost said realistic, but... <laughs> Really, the most realistic of things, is it? Um, but you get the idea. Okay, we're getting there. So, I'm just going to bring that up a bit more. Again, what you can do with the note with the pen tool, or when you're adjusting the nodes that you've created with the pen tool, um, this is the you can pr press A to get to the node tool, and you'll see that just by clicking on the line. You can add a node straight away, which means that I can adjust it instantly. Um, it's so, so easy to adjust nodes and create shapes in Affinity Designer. It really is a time saver. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, but yeah, so something like this, this is, this is starting to look roughly what I had in my head, I guess. Um, and I'm actually just going to drag these here. So another thing I quite like with this shape, I'm just going to click it here. Um, I'm going to, I just want to select these two nodes. So because this shape is selected, I can just drag my node tool, um, to select those two only, and then I can move them around. So that's really handy for certain bits when you just want to have a bit more control over certain areas without having to sort of go in and redo the whole thing. Um, great. So that's looking a bit more. A bit fuller now. I actually now want to get a line coming in under here, so let's do that. So uh, let's do a new layer as before, and let's 
click under here. Again, something like this, I think is going to look closest to what we're after. There we go. And I'm actually going to use the um, color picker tool. I had to just get the correct name there. Uh, so you, you go I as a shortcut to get the color picker tool. And then click on the um, area of color that you want to pick from. And it's simple as that. So it saves you having to go over to the color, uh, color wheel or color panel um, and select the exact area, the exact color that you want. Uh, especially if you want everything to be a unified color as well, it's a really handy thing to use. So I'm, just, I'm actually going to just convert that one there as well, just to make it a bit smoother. And this one as well. Try not to be to take too much time over these bits because there's a few other things we need to add. But it's starting to make more sense now at least. It's kind of looking like a skull, which has got some kind of weird colourful shape going through its face. Um, Let's have a look at that. Yeah, it's getting better. Okay, cool. So, next thing to do is to start to add some more um, shapes on the edge. So I'm going to do that like this for. Like, um, sorry, I'm going to add a new layer again, and I want it to just sort of have like a shape going around about here, and again, just sort of a compositional thing, personal preference. Um, I'm just going to adjust that words. Give me a little bit. Uh, yeah, personal preference. Um, I just kind of like the idea of it sort of being the whole sort of image, the whole square being just covered in these colourful uh, lava sort of shapes. So let's quickly add a couple there as well. Um, again, just referring to my previous image as a reference. Use the colour picker again. I'm just going to keep these this really nice bright greeny blue indigo color just for the purpose of getting things in the right place. Another one there, let's make this a roundabout here. Great. Okay, it's coming together. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refer to my layers. Actually, they were in the wrong layer, so I'll show you how you can <laughs> fix that. Um, sometimes, this user error, um, you make a new layer, you sort of go back on something else, which is what I did, um, thinking that you're in the layer that you want, but you're actually in your previous layer. And so all you need to do is to separate them. I want this one, and actually I'm going to do them all separately, just because why not. Drag that into there. That's as simple as that. Um, do a new layer, top corner one. Just drag it underneath. So I said about the different layer options we've got. You, for this, just to basically put it in the layer nine that we've got here, just drag it underneath the text, um, not underneath the, the thumbnail, but just underneath the text, and then it sits perfectly in there. So I now want to give this like a black background. So there's a few ways you can do that. But the way that I like to do it to give myself more options moving forward is by going to the shape tool. And again, before I do that, I'm going to do a new layer. So it's going to go underneath the skull, this one. So yeah, new new vector layer. Let's drag this right to the bottom. And we're going to go to rectangle tool. Obviously some other options here, and I'll just show you these if you haven't seen them. You've got triangle here, but if you click on the little grey arrow, loads of options. Um, really handy for certain things you might need to make. Um, this is particularly enjoyable. Call out rounded, call out rounded rectangle tool. Very nice shape. Um, some other good shapes there as well. Enjoy. But yeah, so I'm just going to, I've selected a rectangle tool. I've gone to my color option. Make sure I'm on the right layer. And I'm just going to drag and create my shape. Simple as that. So now we've got a better idea of how it's going to look. And as I was saying before about the uh, use of sort of working out where, if I just turn that off, 
so th- this is where my outline was, which it looks nice. It's got a certain char- characteristic to it. As soon as you add the black background to it, you lose that straight away. And then this shape sort of looks visibly a little bit thinner. So it's really key to sort of bear that in mind when you're um, creating these lines and these shapes. You know, how, how is it going to look when the outlines aren't visible, when suddenly it's just all the white or the white skull shape? Um, but yeah, that's definitely getting closer to what I had in mind. Um, so yeah, let's just tweak some of these shapes just while we're here. Uh, and again, just by selecting and dragging. And I'm actually going to add a few or random blobs in here as well. Let's just chuck some in down here. So a few ways you can do that as well. Let's use the ellipse tool. Why not? And um, I'll do a new layer as well. This is just going to have all the blobs, all the little, little blobs in there. Um, new layer, ellipse tool. Let's select the color in advance this time. And yeah, let's just chuck some of these shapes in there randomly. Literally like a sort of lava lump. I think this is what we're trying to get at now. There's random little blobs. A few there. Let's put another one on here. Okay, so now let's use our... It's automatically, give, automatically given us the option to adjust these, but I'm actually going to go to our move tool or press V to do that. Um, and I'm just going to change the angle of some of these just because I want it to be a bit more kind of like they're moving around the skull. So this one's already kind of in a good spot. But, uh, let's tweak that one as well. And then what we can use, something I use all the time actually, but I haven't really used in this particular design yet, is the um, alt drag or option drag, um, depending on your PC or Mac setup. But yeah, alt and drag makes you gives you the ability to uh, duplicate your shape. So you can just do that to your heart's content. But I use that all the time, as many, many others do, I'm sure. Um, saves you loads of time if you uh, wanting to duplicate some shapes around your design. Oops, around your design. So now we've got a few of these little blobs. Let's go to um, add a bit more of a specific shape to these. So what you can do, these are ellipses or their sort of shapes that we've created with the ellipse tool. If you, um, let's do do this the, a few ways you can do this. You can right click and you can go convert to curves or you can, again, I'm going to get this wrong, command and enter as a shortcut you can do as well um, if you're on a Mac. That now has changed that from, if you look on the layers uh, panel, you've, gone from an ellipse to a curve. So what that means is, if we just zoom in here, you're now given these options. So, which we didn't have before. So now we can go in and adjust the shape meticulously. So I actually want this to be like a curved blob. Great. Something like that. Perfect. Let me just do the same thing with these and I'm going to use the shortcut. Great. Uh, go back to A. Let's give it a bit more of a sort of a different sort of blob. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, so that's getting there. We're starting to look like our the design that we want. And I'm now actually just going to show you with this example how you can start to add some really colourful gradients to it just to match our original design, uh, which I showed you at the start. So there's a few ways you can do this. If we just select these blobs, <laughs> these uh, lava uh, drips. So we've got three layers selected here, and I'm just telling you how I did that again. Um, just holding shift. So shift and click to get these shapes selected. Now if we go to the gradient tool, or fill tool should I say, um, just happens to be where you can do gradients as well. Um, and we're going to go to the top little box here, and we're going to adjust this from solid to... Uh, linear or when it's selected you can just drag and click and it automatically gives you that linear gradient option as opposed to just a flat fill color so because this is technically one 
blob. Uh, it's one fluid uh, piece of lava or whatever it is. I want it to be the same the same sort of color way as we're going through. So I'm just going to select this top node here or top color node to adjust the colors. So just to show you that again, click on the top one, go over to your color panel and adjust whatever color you want it to be. So I want these to be really punchy, really vibrant. So let's go to the end. Let's make this actually, let's make the middle one like a yellow, uh, like so make sure it's really punchy. And again, you can adjust where this is with the slider. So really handy way to do it. Give this a more of a blue color. That's great. Um, let's do the same with these. Oops. So that's what happens if you don't deselect the shapes that you currently have. Um, so if you press V and then click on the shape you want, go back to the G, the fill tool, just this one over here. And now we can do the same thing over here. And I kind of want this to be maybe like a yellow down here. And this one to be, yeah, it's really, really super bright. Another thing you can do, if you want to add a bit more variation, I'm just kind of freely picking these colors at the moment. I would normally maybe have a color, a selection of colors um, to one side, which I would color pick from. But for this example, I'm just jumping through them. And um, you, yes, what you can do is on your fill options at the top, you can reverse it. So instead of having to spin it around or do it manually, um, or you know, change the colors manually. You can just quickly flip them around and go. Actually, yeah, I prefer the yellow at the top, for example. I'm just going to quickly change this bottom option as well, like so. Let's give it a bit of a theme occurring here. Yellow on one side. Actually, let's go blue. Why not? Okay, so I'd normally change these, um, but I realise we've we're sort of running out of time a little bit so yeah it's starting to take shape as you can see there's a few things that I would do to this particular um, design to maybe make it fit a little more and if I just zoom in and show you like these I would probably give you more of a actually yeah this sort of thing I would just give them a bit more of a sort of black sort of space just to let the just let them sit a bit better um, maybe just here as well just so it's not quite overlapping. Um, and yeah, this sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, we're getting there now. I'm actually just going to go back to our original design and show you a few things that I did to really make it our our own sort of design. Just double click on there. There we are. Back to our original illustration. So there's a few key things that I just want to show you that I really enjoy adding. One of them being noise. Uh, this is a really great additional, um, it's a really great thing in Affinity Designer. So if I just select, I mean, actually, I believe I can do this. If I select everything, I believe in myself right now. <laughs> Let me just go, I'm just going to select all these layers. Just go to the layer I want. Do, do, do. Yep. And I'm going to go to noise. And this is basically just to show you without the noise. Um, right. So that was a little sort of tweak, I guess you can see. So this is how it looks originally. Some will prefer that. That's great. It's a nice, clean, really punchy, bold, um, colorful thing. Uh, by adding the noise, I think you get this really nice fuzzy effect to it. Um, it's it's like a sort of grain almost like a paper grain and you just get a really cool again it's almost like sort of spray paint I guess a little bit um, but it gives it a bit more of a um, non-computerized look in some ways so really great for having that balance of something that's clearly been designed on a computer but also bringing in some elements from um, yeah sort of like natural textures and things um, and there's one other thing I just want to show you, which I often use. So just to give it that punch that it's got there. And also just to hope that was clear with the, the noise. I just, just thought I will just show you that um, more meticulously. So on one, on one shape here, 
Usually this is set to zero and it's actually hidden behind opacity. So um, just click where it says opacity on your color panel, you get to noise and you just bring that up to 100% uh, or whatever setting you want to have. Um, and there's also things you can do where if you uh, say you have two fills which are uh, both have noise on them. So say you've got using one of these gradient fills and you've um, put it on top of another layer which has a nice gradient fill. You can then use the sort of blend mode you've got here to really make them interact with each other. Um, but again, it's just a, a little tweak using the noise um, setting that we've got. So yeah, just two little things to show you just to round up. Brightness and contrast and HSL. So actually you can see I probably had another option under here which I was messing around with. Yeah, there's a super psychedelic one. Also fine, but I preferred this one, so um, that's what I ended up with. Um, but yeah, there's a few little things I've added. So just to go to the HSL here, I'll just actually show you that from scratch. It's just down here. So you're on your artboard or your main uh, design. Just turn that off for a second. Just go down and here and you can add adjustment and add a HSL. Simple as that. This I find really, really useful if I'm doing something where maybe I'm not quite sure on the colors that I've chosen, or I just want to see a completely different um, set of colors. Or if you're doing something for a client maybe, and you have your design or your logo, and you want to give them other options, which you maybe hadn't thought of or hadn't come up before, just adding a HSL adjustment, and um, I'll just quickly show you that as well. If you just make sure it's on this um, sort of, option with all the colors there you can just drag and end up with completely different option so i find this really useful as i say when i'm not really sure if i'm into a color or into a design that i've done i just want to completely see it in a completely different um uh you know like an alternate uh, style should we say but yeah for now i'm going to keep that on there because i've obviously tweaked these um previously and vibrant adjustment is really beneficial. So again, it's kind of slightly duller. I've just added a, another option in the, oh, I sure I just can't see those. <laughs> They've been covered up by my face. Um, but yeah, there's just this little icon here, then the little box underneath. Um, vibrance adjustment really just punches the colors through a bit more as well. Again, don't go crazy with it, but I really like it when it's super, super colourful, really high contrasty. Again, doing something for Instagram especially, it's beneficial if something is really punchy at a really small size. When people are scrolling through Instagram or on the uh, you know certain feeds or whatever, you if you can try and stand out at a small size uh, with on the Instagram feed, then it, I generally find. If something's really colourful and really vibrant, that's only going to make that easier. So, little example there. And again, brightness and contrast also in the same area. Uh, just punches it up a bit more. Just gives it a bit more vibrance. Uh, great. Okay, so that's, that's my run-through of the various techniques and tools and things that I've used to create this design. Uh, hopefully, there are some... Uh, tools and little shortcuts and things in there which you may find useful um, hopefully you get some use out of the noise adjustment which I love using as well um, but yeah hopefully that gives you some guidance and a bit of a uh, idea of some different techniques you might be able to use which you haven't seen before but um, great yes that's that's the one through uh, thanks very much for watching and I will keep an eye on the comments and hopefully reply to any questions or anything that you have as well. So yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.